Hello everybody and welcome to another video of RNR Partners. My name is Ruxandra, I am managing partner of RNR Partners law firm here in Romania, Bucharest, and today I'm going to speak about the two main types of Romanian companies, the SRL and the PFA in Romania, updated for 2024. If you've been watching our channel for a while now, then you know that we already made a video about the SRL, so the uh, limited liability company in Romania versus the PFA or the sole trader type of company in Romania a few years ago. But as it happens with laws, uh, many things have changed in the meantime and we wanted to make an updated video for you so that we can uh, fill you in on the latest changes. And before I start, just a little bit of shameless promotion. If you need help with setting up your Romanian company or if you need any help, generally speaking, uh, on commercial law, immigration law or real estate in Romania, you can contact us. I will leave uh, the link to book a legal consultation with us somewhere here in the edit, or you can write uh, an email to us also. I will leave our uh, email address somewhere here and you can also find all the information about us in the video description. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So in Romania, we have two main types of uh, companies, SRL called uh, Societate cu răspundere limitată. It is a type of limited liability company. So pretty much the equivalent of a Romanian LLC. The second type of Romanian company is the PFA. We also call it the sole trader. It doesn't have a perfect equivalent in English. We call it persoana fizică autorizată. So it is an authorized legal person. You will find all sorts of translations online. And it is basically a type of company for, uh, as, it, as I mentioned, sole traders, freelancers, people who want to do business by themselves. But also I want to mention that they can have employees so you can employ people in your PFA. Not very common to be honest, usually people just want to work by themselves, but you cannot have uh, other shareholders. So as you might expect, the main difference between the two types of companies is that while a limited liability company, so an SRL, can also be incorporated by two or more people. So you can have uh, more shareholders, you can open uh, an SRL with a friend or maybe your spouse, for example. On the other hand, a PFA, so a sole trader, is just you by yourself. You can have employees on that company, but you cannot have other shareholders, other associates in your endeavors. The second thing we can talk about is the price for incorporating such a company. It is one of the main things that people ask us about when we start their project. When it comes to um, the costs from the trade registry perspective, so how many taxes you have to pay in order to open the companies, it is pretty much the same. Uh, the taxes for opening an SRL are around 100 something lei, which is less than uh, uh, 50 euros. When it comes to legal taxes, so how much you would have to pay us to open such companies, it differs of course. Our office doesn't offer um, uh, lower fees necessarily for the PFA. So if you either open a company with us that is an LLC, the SRL in Romania, or the sole trader, the PFA, will pretty much bill you the same. Um, the documentations are a bit more complicated for the SRL, so we have to make a bigger file for you. But when it comes to a PFA, there are more conditions to, to be met. Um, first of all, if you want to open a sole trader type of company, so a Romanian PFA, you will need to show some sort of proof that you have either experience in that field or education. And what I mean by that is if you open a company in the um, IT field, so you are a programmer, you uh, write code software, you will have to show that you either graduated from university with a degree in uh, engineering, maybe software engineering, or you previously worked for another company that gave you such a role, you will have to show some sort of qualification. Because the PFA, this is the company that I'm talking about, the PFA 
does um, um, let's say um, show that you are a professional in that field right if you're a freelancer in the IT field you know your stuff the same if uh, you open a company in other fields if you want to open a company in the translator field you want to do English Romanian translations you will have to show you have the proper qualifications some sort of documents for the SRL, the limited liability company, on the other hand, nobody cares. You can open the company in whichever field you want, even with, without having experience or education. And last but not least, taxes, because that's why what people usually ask us when they want to open a company in Romania and we present them the options. Which one will be the most um, financially advantageous for me? On which one will I pay the least amount of taxes? And here it gets a bit more tricky and that's why uh, eventually wanted to make this video for you updated for 2024 because we have a lot of changes with regards to taxes uh, and I'll get my little cheat sheet over here so that I can give you all the accurate information. There's uh, quite a lot of numbers here uh, and uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. First of all, for the SRL, the Romanian LLC, we will have um, uh, the tax of 1% on your entire turnover if you have up to 60,000 euros per year in revenue. If you have between 60,000 per year and 500,000 per year euro, you will have to pay 3% on your uh, revenue. This is the micro enterprise. 1% tax on revenue or 3%. If you have over 500k euro per year in revenue, you will not qualify for a micro enterprise in Romania, but you will have to pay 16% tax on profit. For the micro, which is usually the most desired type of company in Romania, I'll also link somewhere here the video we made about incorporating a micro enterprise in Romania if you want to learn more about it. Uh, for the micro, there are also other conditions to be uh, to be met with. We changed uh, the legislation here in Romania quite recently and uh, you should know about them as well. Not only do you have to take care of this bracket not to have over 500 euros per year in revenue, but also you cannot be, um, you cannot have more than one micro where you are a sole associate, I mean sole shareholder, um, owner of the company. And also you cannot have more than 20% of your entire revenue in the consultancy field. So if, for example, I know that I will have 100% uh, um, of my bills in the consultancy, I know that I'm a business consultant and all I will be billing my clients is consultancy activities. I do not qualify for the micro enterprise. So for 1% or 3% tax on revenue, I only qualify for the 16% tax on profit for my company. And for the micro enterprise, you also need one employee on your company at least. This can also be you, I mean, you as 100% uh, owner of the company can also employ yourself in the company. It is not mandatory in Romania to employ yourself in your own company, but you can and you will have to do that if you want a micro enterprise. Here things get a bit more trickier, especially for non-EU citizens, because they need a work visa and a work permit in order to work in Romania. And for EU citizens, it is not a problem. They can easily employ themselves. So here they do not need this type of uh, special work visa. I will also link somewhere here our video about work visa in Romania, so you can check it out if that is something that you need. Going uh, now further, so this was your tax uh, on income or on profit for your micro enterprise or for your SRL in Romania in general. Next, you'll also need to pay 8% tax on dividends. 
What is a dividend? Dividend is basically the way that you pay yourself in the company. If me, Ruxandra Vishoyu, opens a company tomorrow, an SRL, I cannot use the money that I got yesterday from my online shop, for example. I cannot use them today to pay my bills or to pay my money at the groceries. I need to talk to my accountant and ask them to uh, do all the formalities needed to pay myself dividends from the company income, right? And this can be done once per year or once every three months. You cannot pay yourself dividends every month like you would do with the salary. Uh, after dividends, we also have two very interesting types of uh, taxes in Romania, which are quite similar in their name. One is CAS, uh, CAS, this is the pension in Romania, and the second one is CASS, this is the health insurance that you need to pay in Romania. So if you open a Romanian SRL, you do not need to pay yourself pension, it is not mandatory. Um, from our experience, our clients, generally being expats, are not very interested about the pension in Romania. Usually Romanians are, because we know we will want to retire here in Romania at some point. But there is also an option for you to get a, get a private pension or make investments and live off them after you no longer want to work for your own business. There are options and it is also an advantage for you because you'll pay less taxes. Uh, next, the CASS, so the health insurance in Romania. Here things get more complicated. We have three brackets. The first bracket, if you make over 4,000 uh, uh, euros per year in dividends, so if you pay yourself that sum, you will need to pay 400 euros uh, per year for health. Uh, if you pay yourself over 8,000 uh, euros per year in dividends, you will pay 800 euros for, for uh, health. And if you pay yourself over 16,000 euros per year in dividends, you will need to pay for your health insurance 1,600 euros. So as you see, it is pretty much 10% of how much you are paying yourself. So not the turnover of the company, but the dividends, what you will distribute yourself as profit. And here again, clients ask us, how can I pay the least amount in health insurance? The easy response is not to pay yourself dividends from the company if you can live like that, <laughs> uh, but it is an option, right? Then your taxes in Romania will be lower. Now, we will go to the PFA, so the sole trader. Here the taxes seem to be a bit higher, but again, you will need to put pen on paper to make your own calculations because depending on the type of your business, they can only also be considered lower because they are on profit specifically. Uh, your taxes for the PFA will be 10% not on turnover, like it is for a micro enterprise, but on profit. So if you have a lot of expenses on your company, it is okay, you will pay a lower amount. Uh, next, the CAS and the CASS the pension. The CAS is 25% um, up to 10,000 euros per year. So we have a cap, which is good, but 25% in pension, it is quite a bit, especially for our expat clients, who I mentioned are not very interested in the <laughs> pension system in Romania. Then we have the health insurance, it is 10%, uh, maximum 4,000 euros per year. Again, we have a cap, which is good, but still, if you put those together, for your PFA, you will pay around 45% uh, in taxes. Again, we calculate profits, not income, but just so you get a general uh, idea of how much you will need to pay in taxes for your company. Um, here, uh, again, I'm encouraging you put pen on paper, make the calculations with your bookkeeper uh, if you can or by yourself if you prefer to do it that way so you can choose the best type of company for you. Uh, as uh, a conclusion for the PFA versus SRL, uh, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, fight, because uh, usually it is some sort of fight. We have clients coming to us and asking, what type of company can I open? Not everybody chooses the SRL, believe it or not, because based on everything that I told you, an SRL could be the better solution. 
Another thing I didn't want to get too much into with the SRL is that from the SRL you can make an exit, you can sell your company. The PFA cannot be sold, it is linked to you. And from our experience, PFA is mostly uh, used by Romanians, not so much by foreign clients because we can also do our own bookkeeping in the company, we can open it by ourselves easier, but uh, there are no expat clients who would like to do their own bookkeeper keeping. I've seen this question on many expat groups on Facebook or in the comments in our videos. Uh, if I can do my own bookkeeping in the company, we do not recommend it, not uh, even for a Romanian, for the PFA, for the SRL it is always out of the question. By law, you need a bookkeeper for your company. So if you see all of that, um, an SRL is usually preferred by our expat clients, but a few of them also prefer the PFA, if you believe it or not. Um, also for the PFA called PFA on Norma de Venit. I do not have an equivalent for that in English. It is a special taxation mode that is kept very heavily and you can talk about it with your bookkeeper um, again making the calculations uh, you need. And uh, another thing I wanted to, uh, to mention is that if you have any other questions on this topic, as you see it is a very complicated topic, please drop them in the comments below. As you might know, if you have seen also our videos before, we answer each and every one of, um, of your uh, comments and we do that ourselves as lawyers. We do not have an assistant or a secretary do that. So the answers are accurate and uh, yeah, that's one way to do it. Or if you need more specific advice, you need us to go into detail or maybe you want our help to open a company in Romania, you can book a legal consultation with us or write to us at office at rrpb.ro. We, uh, we answer every uh, email and uh, we can discuss there further about your plans for uh, doing business in Romania. That's about it for uh, today. You can also follow us on social media if you want to keep posted with our activity. We are very active on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram. And here on, the, on YouTube we post every two weeks. Uh, we encourage you to give us a like if you really like this video. It helps our channel uh, a lot. And to subscribe to our channel because you can be up to date with the latest activity in Romania when it comes to legislation. Uh, as, as you see every Everything changes very rapidly and we promise we will make new videos if these things change like we did for this video to update you on the differences between the PFA and the SRL in Romania. Up until next time have a lovely day. Bye bye.